I don't think you can train your diaphragm to do this. <laughs> because if you're absolutely honest with yourself, it doesn't come from down here, it comes from here somewhere. <laughs> Singers don't do this. Singers don't even talk about that. You know? But when I was a kid, I, I was trying to figure this out too, and I couldn't. And uh, my my teacher, Muriel, she did it naturally because singers, they, they do that. that. If you came into a singing studio and sang without vibrato or with a curious vibrato, everybody would think you were some sort of a Mars man or something. And um, they just do it naturally. I mean, I've talked to singers about this. I talked to Pavarotti, I said to him, how do you do this vibrato? I said, how do I do this? He said, I'm trying to stop it now. <laughs> Because we were laughing so hard, he didn't get to elaborate on it. But when I was a kid, I bought this book by Frederick Wilkins, and it was made by Firestone Tires. And it was a book on how to play the flute. And guess what? There was this section in it on vibrato. And it went like this. He said you should use the word ha. 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 And then you do it again, like ha, 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 ha. And then you do ha 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 ha. Then you do ha 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 ha. Then you join it together like ha. So eventually you think ha. You see? I mean, I'm not even a singer. I never learned singing. I just figured this bit out. You see? But you can see it sounds like a regular vibrato. And I'm not doing it here, I'm doing it here, with this ha. You see? But this sort of vibrato that I'm talking about, which exists in America, is a vibrato which is uncontrolled because it comes all the time like a <laughs> And I really can't do it. But uh, I think it sort of came from the Judas Baker school. And it got passed around, and people were imitating Julius instead of really learning to play the flute one step forward. Because Julius was just as much in the dark as everybody else until one day he discovered how to do this thing. So then everybody started doing it. And of course, you only have to listen to the New York Philharmonic when you hear uh, George Laurent, I think it was him, who had this ferocious sort of French vibrato that got turned on at the beginning, you know? John Horne. John Horne, yeah, sorry, the wrong guy. Yeah, thank you. First of all, you have to take a tune that requires a good vibrato, you know? One like this. Some tune like that, because when you're involved in classical music, it's very difficult, because the rules are different. What you need to do is this. for three minutes with a vibrato on it. The vibrato has to be brought in to context all the time. You see? Mm -hmm. Now the next thing that we have to look at is how to get a better attack on the flute. You know, sometimes I think that you're turned out a bit too much. Maybe turn in a little bit more. Just get
get a better edge on the, on the mm -hmm. tone. can study it in there. So these are, this is how to go about it. And then gradually get a bit more into the flute. these sort of things to get the whole thing moving. Mm -hmm. But take a, take a study, a study, any, like any of the Burm caprices are very good. You know this one? <laughs> Lift up for the top F sharp. And then when you go down to the low A. <laughs> drop right into it so that you absolutely hit it. All these little things to do when you're practicing. When you practice, you should practice trying to play beautifully all the time. So when you go up there, this sort of thing. You just practice noodling around to get a good sound. And then practicing the low notes to get them loud. It is a question of blowing into the flute. All this rolling out for the low notes is not going to do it. It just makes them more, uh, how can I say, tubby. You know, you get a sound like this. Instead of this. And then you can change the sound if you have the approach that I have. See what I mean? You can incorporate these dynamics into the music, but you have to choose the music that you're going to do it with. And uh, if you have Baroque music, it's a bit more difficult, for example, because the ideas uh, uh, contained in Baroque music are somehow or other not conducive to the changing of tone that we understand in Romantic French, German, or Italian music, French European music. It's different. You know, you need to be able to do this sort of thing. <laughs> 